Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Cynthia Tulin Wilson, and I'm here on my show, Author to Author, with Matthew Schmidt, who has written a very interesting book, The Last Tribune. How are you today, Matt? Uh, I injured my foot earlier last week. Other than that, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Just don't stand up. <laughs> or walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So that's good. Um, would you like to start us with prayer? Okay. Mm -hmm. In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. St. Arrhenius, pray for us. So, um, tell me what led, led you to write this book. It's a combination of factors. I actually started by writing the ending, which I later wrote the book up to. So, um, I had several ideas. One idea that I had for a long time is a, a, a society where they decided the the ruler by a series of duels mm -hmm. and um that that was one one of the seeds uh i also had read about um i'm going to mispronounce the name renee gerard's mm -hmm. theory of scapegoating mm -hmm. and started to mix that in and that's that's where this book comes from okay well, that's uh, that's interesting. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, the the story is about this the society. I can't remember even the. I think it's called the United Tribes. I so I wrote this book a while ago. So worldwide the culture that formed after a very terrible worldwide war using extremely powerful weapons. Mm -hmm. Only a few which survived, mm -hmm. and. Basically, these these power suits, these infantry weapons that are capable of destroying even cities, some of them survived, and they the United Tribes used it to ritually de determine the new ruler by having this tournament between people, tribunes, who can use the power suits. So, mm -hmm. uh, the story follows Iranius, who is um, one of the, the teenagers who's able to use one of them, and his climb through the ranks until he can finally join the final battle. Mm -hmm. Sounds like good science fiction. Yeah. it's it. Part of it was... Well, the reason they have these super powerful battle suits is like, okay, there's the Hunger Games where they have a bunch of boys and girls fighting each other. Yep. Like, okay, realistically, the, the oldest men are going to be the ones who win because, like, physically strength. Of, yeah. of a a man and a woman of the same age, the man is almost certainly going to be able to overpower the woman. So, my idea yeah. is they have superpowers. Well, not really, but they're like <laughs> cybernetic battle suit things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it kind of evens ill, so to speak. Yeah. Uh huh. I one of those suits for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to even the field after 74 years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So they have these, these powerful suits. What exactly can the suits do? Well, they can fly around really fast. They can launch nuclear weapons, um, shoot super powerful lasers. Wow. Um, basically the, the first line is, they told us we could destroy cities because the original, these suits were really used for were, were anti-city weapons. And they'd be like, just one suit out of a whole infantry like unit. So, thousands of people in these suits fighting each other, and then it kind of destroyed everything. So then, the survivors were like, never again. So, mm -hmm. they built a society where there's this tournament to decide who's the absolute ruler. So there's no like election to contest. And um and 
so most of the tournament is fought with virtual virtual reality because obviously you don't want these suits fighting each other too often. Mm-hmm. And it's all virtual reality up to the final battle between the last two tribunes, and that's fought with real weapons in the city that's reconstructed after every battle. So I can spoil the ending, because the thing is, the story doesn't make too much sense without knowledge of the ending. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you go back to the original types of science fiction, they, they really didn't have anything like this. You know, it's it's just kind of pathetic things like trying to go from planet to planet. You know, <laughs> well, and this... the other people or non people, <laughs> you know, no real good battles or very few. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, I like I like the battles better. <laughs> good and evil so, fight. So <laughs> basically, I had to write like seven or nine fight scenes. Oh. And mm-hmm. at the end, I was like, okay, there's a reason people don't write too many fight scenes in the same book. It gets hard to make <laughs> each distinct and, you know, mm-hmm. it's probably more than nine. Gosh. There's like several per chapter at some point. Um, because <laughs> because this is a novella, so I have to get through it quick. And lots of big tournaments, so got to keep going through the ranks. Mm-hmm. Yep. So... And so, when end does good, evil, uh, good or evil win? Well, so basically, the final battle is fought to the death because the idea being they don't want to trust just a simulation to decide who's the final ruler. Mm-hmm. So, Iranius finds out that his childhood friend, who is from a different tribe, a different different faction, is the other Tribune, little though he doesn't know it. So, they end up having a final battle. He mortally wounds Melody, his his best friend. Ooh. And then they're like, you know, the point of this wasn't actually to decide who wins. The point of this was to kill someone so it was a human sacrifice to appease the masses. So, Melody dies, and Arrhenius is the victor. He's like, okay, no more of this. And he refuses to, to, to elect the... Supreme Consul, the the absolute ruler, and so it's not like so much there was good and evil. More was like a bad situation where good people were in trying to kill each other because that's what the system made them do. Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good plot. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> it's always good against evil or evil against good. This is a whole, whole different take on it. I like that. Mm-hmm. that- Native. Will there be, uh, I think you said there would be more after this. It's going to be like ongoing. Uh, no, this, this, is, this is a one-off story because it ends with it ends with them dismantling the system as like no more killing people as a scapegoat for. Mm-hmm. What Rene Garrard said was basically the scapes, scapegoats only work if you don't admit it's a scapegoat. If you admit that the person you're harassing or canceling or killing or whoever was just your way to vent your frustrations then it's it's there's no fun in it anymore it doesn't it won't work to diffuse tension in the in the tribe so mm-hmm. basically this final battle televised final battle they they talk and it's like well there was no actual point to this this is just a scapegoat a big ritual to sacrifice a teenager to as a human mm-hmm. sacrifice to appease the, the the conflicting desires of the world mm-hmm so, hmm. okay. that's uh, yeah. Maybe you could have her look like she's dead, and she comes back in the next one. <laughs> no, I don't. No, there's no next uh, one. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. So, mm-hmm. so how many of these uh, these types of books have you written? Well, I've written. This is the only one in that universe. I've also written, uh, I think, one other dystopia novel. Mm-hmm. Um, the World of Wishes, which is, that's a series, although I've never gotten beyond the first book. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's where I've written more dystopias. I don't know. It, I've written a lot of books. It kind of goes together after a while. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
I can understand that. Yeah, that's, uh, <clears throat> it's after a while, you're, I think when you're building your worlds, you, you, you know, you probably keep going back to the same to some extent. You know, alter it a bit, but, uh, you know, worlds will... It's, it's yeah. auto-plagiarism when you use the same themes in a different book. Yeah, yeah. But you certainly can, um, you know, you certainly can continue world-building, um, you know, um, and just change it a little bit as time goes on, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Dystopias are interesting, you know. It's uh, it appeal it appeals to our more negative side, mm -hmm. and uh, interestingly, I think that's some something that it surprises me how many people enjoy them because you think since it does kind of reflect some of the problems we have as humans, um, you know, it that it would not be something that would fascinate people to such an extent, but it seems to... Anyway, that's my take on it. But what do I know? I've never written one. <laughs> I'm a memoirist. <laughs> so, you know, so that that's, you know, everything there is factual. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Well, sometimes I do mix real-world events uh with my fiction, because I figure I've experienced this myself, so like, why not give an accurate picture? Like, mm -hmm. um, I've I've written scenes in ICUs, and then I was actually hospitalized in the ICU once, uh, and I was oh. like, this is actually a lot different. <laughs> <laughs> you could write one about uh, American politics. <laughs> oh, I am. <laughs> I am writing Are a book you? about American politics. It's set in a, a, a society much like our own, except there's like necromancers and AIs and indentured servants, which I guess maybe doesn't all that much too different from modern society. But anyway. I don't know. Uh, indentured servants, certainly we call them now, but we just call them, you know, people living in the inner city. That are mm -hmm. doing the lousy jobs, mm -hmm. you know. So I don't know that that's that would be that off, you know. It, it seems like yeah. it would work. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. it's it's this book I'm writing. It's um, it's thinly devised political commentary, but basically it's by way of coping with 2020. Um, oh. it's not complete yet. That one isn't out yet. So. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. American politics, if we look at them closely, could actually be a horror show. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. No. But, uh, anyway. This, this uh, Last Tribune is also somewhat of a commentary on American politics, and that it's like, these people of the different tribes really, really hate each other, but the hate is more like they express it by having this tournament that kills someone in the end. Well, the, the hatred between different groups in this country certainly does end up in a lot of death. Yeah, unfortunately. It's uh, way beyond unfortunate. It's just really, really sad. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I figure I can write a book that may not like change the course of history, but at least it'll give someone a way to cope, so... Mm -hmm. I figure, like, last judgment, stand before Jesus and be like, you know, Lord, maybe I didn't do all these other things, but I, you know, helped you when you were really bored or in pain. I gave you a cool book to read, so let me in! <laughs> <laughs> it could work, who knows? <laughs> so how many books total have you written? You, you seem to be very prolific when you're talking about these different stories you've written. The one, two, three, four, five, six, six published, I think, but I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure. It might be seven. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe it's, there are different series and I can think of the series names, but I can't, it's, they're written too many books. Yeah. There's no end to the writing of books as Ecclesiastes says. Mm-hmm. 
Yep, I wrote one memoir, and then I decided I have to write another one. <laughs> well, now it's ChatGPT. There is no end to the writing of books. You just have to write books for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, that's you know, it's a, it's an interesting occupation. You know, it's mm -hmm. when you think of it, you just sit there and think and type. And the next thing you know, there's something that exists that didn't exist before. You know, yeah. it, it's really a fascinating, uh, fascinating With fiction, you're kind of mixing different things. Like, one of the influences for The Last Tribune was Ender's Game, which is also about people and virtual reality things starting to become, like, well, in Ender's Game, it's like Starship Commanders, and then... It turns out they're fighting this battle that was... It wasn't actual virtual. They're fighting actual alien bugs from outer space. Which I guess, you know, that can happen. You're you're shooting video game aliens that turned out to be real aliens. Who would have guessed? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, at least, you know, you've got a good imagination. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you really do. You're blessed. <laughs> Thank you. Most of us have to drag stuff out, you know. <laughs> I can tell you don't, and that you enjoy it. That's great. Oh, yes. I do enjoy it. Mm hmm. Uh, mm hmm. So, um, what, what exactly, what, you know, you were telling me what your next book was going to be. I mean, are you thinking of uh, a series or are you thinking of. Um, you know, a new, a new path to go on or something, you know? Um, well, the book I was talking about with the, the political commentary, that's a standalone. It's, it's basically, it's a society much like our own that becomes increasingly polarized and eventually develops into a full blown civil war. And then the war is over at, at the end and it's like, okay, well, that's statement made. I made my political commentary. It can be done now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, actually, that may not be fiction. <laughs> I know that's that's the reason I'm writing this book so I can cope. Yeah, it's it's really it's it's uh, scary. It is. It is because who knows where this is going to end? I don't. That's for sure. Well, God but, does, but you know. Yeah. yeah, but he's not letting us in on the secret. You see, that's what the problem. <laughs> But, uh, I don't know. If but, God told everyone it'd be a civil war, I think it'd just be a civil war because people want to get it over with or something. You know, yeah. like, hey, let's see each other so I can go back to watching Netflix. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's you know the it, the country is so polarized. Polarized. It is. Yeah. It makes the civil war like look like we were all on the same side. <laughs> yeah. Know, it's insane. But uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, less than 250 days until the election. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I try not to do... What I do instead of doom scroll, I like give myself like 30 minutes to doom scroll, then stop, because otherwise you can just doom scroll all day. Yeah, yeah. And most of the news is just the same from day to day. It's like... Mm -hmm. Donald Trump did this, Donald Trump did that. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, the, well, what's new? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's interesting to see how the country has changed, you know, and... Uh, it has. Think, yeah. Yeah, well, I can see that probably more because I was born in 1950. So... Oh, yeah. Yeah, so 1950... I mean, in the 1960s, everyone thought the country was falling apart because there were things like hippies. <laughs> it's like, folks, you don't know what can really tear a country apart. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. uh, I was yeah. born in 1992, and I grew up. Uh, things were different before 9/11. Um, the 9/11 happened, and things weren't the same afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. I found yep. if you like look at series that sort of started before nine eleven and ended afterwards, you can see a different different tone change in art between those two dates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I think we've always thought that we are um, invincible. Well. <laughs> and now I think people may realize we're not. <laughs> and uh, I there think that were, was a wake-up call. There were people denying there would be a civil war up until like 1860, and then there was one. It's like, oh, well. And then mm -hmm. another one last. How do we have over in like just a few battles? Well, no, it wasn't. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's it's interesting to see how people look at um, the political and social and economic uh, world around us, and how you know they form their own opinions, and then all of a sudden those things get blown out of the water when activity really happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. But yeah, it's an entirely different world from the t the way it was when I was a child. And, uh, you know, even with the 60s, which of course people still talk about how bad they were, but compared to some of the stuff that goes on today, uh, not really. I mean, yeah, there was a lot of drugs, you know, there was, you know, a lot of bad things that occurred, but compared to the world today, it's like, it's not even in the same ballpark. So. Um, there was a card game, you've probably heard of it called Magic the Gathering that was released in around the same time I was born. Mm -hmm. um, towards the beginning, it stopped putting demons in this game because I was worried about backlash from the, I guess, ev evangelical right. Mm -hmm. Now they're boasting about how they have non-binary characters and they deleted a bunch of cards from their databases because they were racist which okay maybe that was a good thing but still it's like it went like a complete three six complete 180 from like we have to be careful the christians do we have to be careful of the woke lobby yeah yeah all in just three decades yeah i know it's it, there's still some concern, but nowhere near what there used to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like freedom of speech and freedom of press. Um, on you know how people say steroids, I say it's more like they're on speed and heroin at the same time. You know, it's like well? it's entirely different. <laughs> you know. So, yeah. I'm not sure how much free speech is out there anymore because, like, you can say whatever you want, you might just get canceled. And yeah, it's a thing I've thought about as an author. Like, what if I say something that ticks off everyone? Well, they could happen. Yeah, yeah, it could. But uh... Uh, if I get canceled, help it's for something I said about said about God, and not something about I don't know some other issue that's going to become everyone's favorite pet issue 20 years from now yeah mm -hmm. yeah you never know so it's a it's interesting it's an interesting commentary on our society because it has changed so much it has it's a relatively short period of time i mean if it was a thousand years people wouldn't even notice it but it's like bang <laughs> change but that must give you a lot of uh, a lot of ideas too. So that's good for you for your writing. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. I've uh, I think a lot about like societies rising and collapsing. A few actually it was last year, I think I got really interested in the late Bronze Age collapse, mm -hmm. which is uh, around eleven seventy seven BC. Mm -hmm. uh, things went very, very wrong, and a lot of empires collapsed around the same time. <laughs> but it's not clear exactly what happened because there's lots of there's one city that has a bunch of like cuneiform tablets saying, "Guys, we need help! Please send help!" And then somebody cuts off. Like whatever they wanted help from, it was too late for them by the time the archaeologists find it. <laughs> oh boy, that also sounds interesting. Yeah, the the yeah. late Bronze Age was very had a was actually a pretty global culture for like a portion of the globe, but lots of trade between kingdoms. Um, mm -hmm. Bronze is hard to make; the t 
tin and the copper are found in very different locations. So there are these supply chains going across like thousands of miles to make bronze. Mm -hmm. And then things went very bad for some reason. No one's quite sure why, and it all fell apart. Well, ultimately, if I think if we look at all of the cultures of the world over time, eventually they do all disintegrate. Yeah, you know. that's the thing I think about. Um, yeah. It's, it's something that doesn't form my writing because, like, I tend to write in cultures that are near some sort of great change. I mean, maybe it's because I grew up with lots of great change, but something before something goes really bad or there's some big change that's changing how everything is. Mm -hmm. There's certainly been enough of them over history. Yeah. No, so. it, it's, it's fascinating to see how different cultures have very different values and like, like in some cultures, like, well, in biblical times, um, a, what we would call a slave, which was not quite the same thing as a slave in the 1800s in America, mm -hmm. that was just not necessarily a bad life. It was because it's a position of respect, possibly, if you had, like, if you were a slave of an important person, you may actually have more more cultural cred than some poor guy who doesn't have a job. As the world turns, there used to be a... I've always thought of that phrase. It used to be a television show, a soap opera, as the mm -hmm. world in the 50s, um, maybe the early 60s, too. And, you know, it was just, you know, a daily uh, daily thing about how people lived um, or a certain group of people lived. But it's like I think about that often. As the world turns, things do change. Yeah. And you know, you never know what the end result's going to be. I mean, really, no. who, you know, who who really would have thought when democracy started how it could could lead to such division, you know, um, as opposed to everybody getting together and saying, okay, let's vote, and the person, you know, the, the one that has the most votes gets it. You know, it's like, what's going on right now? It's almost like a gladiator fight. Right. Well, that's why I wrote this book, which is about a gladiator fight. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's a literal one instead of it, yeah, it really it's it's just unbelievable, you know, uh how things have changed. You know, the well, world changed. John Quincy Adams wrote I believe what John Quincy Adams, one of the founding fathers, wrote there has not been a democracy that has not committed suicide. Basically talking about how mob rule inevitably destroys a nation. Yeah. And oh. the other point was that a mob can basically be just as terrible as a tyrant. Well, yeah, and I mean, we've, just in the last few years, we've seen that occur, so. Well, it gives you a lot to uh, write about, look at it that way. <laughs> just yeah. Just names and the location and tell the same story. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, well, okay, there's this the Necromancer's War, which is the book I'm writing that's thinly available for legal commentary. There's no direct analogs between politicians in the story and politicians in mm -hmm. real life, because I figured I don't want to go there. I don't want to like yeah. create like effigies to mock. It's like there's demagogues and there's mm -hmm. some terrible people mm -hmm. and there's some people who are pretty good, but they're on the wrong side of the war. And there's people trust trying to survive it all. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the way to go. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. And you don't want uh, people to recognize if you're taking anything from the, from the current world. So, I mean, it, it is political commentary. It is not thickly veiled. Um, there's like a, 2020 style event someone some people accidentally cause a massive ice age and it it causes global chaos and this leads to the disintegration of the league which is the totally not the u.s oh no it's totally not the u.s <laughs> <laughs> well we'll see <laughs> we'll see maybe we won't call you a writer anymore we'll call you a prophet 
<laughs> I hope not. That would be like... Well, I hope the stuff I'm writing about won't come true, because I'm writing a lot of terrible things. <laughs> yeah. Maybe uh, I should write a book where there's a happy ending and everyone is happy, and then it'll be like, yay, this will happen. Uh, probably not. <laughs> I'll be not. <laughs> well, thing is fiction, you can end the story however you want, so it's like, you don't have to be realistic. That's true. That's true. It's, it's, uh, it's fascinating to talk to somebody who's building worlds and looking yeah. at what the world is right now, <laughs> which isn't good. So, yeah. Yeah, the only problem with writing about current events is you have to write fast. I want to get this book done before the election. So, less than 250 <laughs> days to do it. Write fast. Uh, 250 days. Less than that's, that, actually. But Yeah, that's not great. But that's not going to be a uh, a good amount. That's not going to be a good period in our history, I don't think. <laughs> no. A lot of... Well, um, I'm an ad administrator on the Catholic Writers Guild's uh, chat room. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a politics channel, and I've... It's, it's an active channel. <laughs> Occasionally, I've had to move prayer requests into because, like, guys, you cannot talk about politics in the prayer request channel. Talk about it in the politics channel. It's fine there, but don't don't pray about political things in the prayer request channel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although the one subject that I saw that got more heated than anything else on the entire chat room. I once innocently posted a poll saying, is there writing in heaven? And that was the most heated discussion I have ever seen on the on the chat room. Really? Yeah. Um, we had to, like, diffuse it after a while because people got so upset about it. I swear. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> wow. Now that's something you should write a book about. <laughs> How people are afraid of writing in heaven or whatever. Well, I think it's because people, like, at least among Catholics, it's like, well, heaven is going to be where you're spending your eternity with, like, right? Mm -hmm. So if you, if, if something you want isn't in heaven, you'll basically just have it on earth and it's gone forever. So, uh, that's a sensitive subject. Yeah. I didn't know how sensitive, like, I think the the more common one is are there pets in heaven, which is I know not to post about that. That's just that's just asking for it. Yep, yep. Well, I'll tell you if Lulu the cat here isn't going to heaven with me. <laughs> no. Oh, um, no. Yeah, people are crazy about their pets. I know. <laughs> I'm one of those women. I'm a cat lady, an old cat lady. <laughs> there you go. Oh, um, old female cat. We we bonded, <laughs> mm -hmm. but anyway, um, yeah, that's that's really. I would never think that writing would drive people over the edge like that. You know, is there writing in heaven? I mean, it's a legitimate question. It is. <laughs> it drove people mad. That's crazy. Uh. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, we. Um... I'll admit that I'm one of the people who got mad, so it's like, okay, lesson learned. Yep. Mm -hmm. you don't make that kind of thread. At least not in the normal chat room. Meet in politics if you're feeling brave. Well, I mean, who would ever think such a thing would be uh, an issue that would get... Well, I, did, I didn't think that. <laughs> oh. I mean, I imagine a lot of good conversations coming out of it but you know mm -hmm. yeah so mm -mm. yeah well we could put something on there about interspecies love <laughs> you know the cat and woman. but uh i'm not surprised that would be a hot a hot topic because people really do love their pets. They they make them into little people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my 
my brother is in seminary and uh apparently that's one of the topics they covered is what to do when you're a priest and some kids ask you is my dog in heaven because oh. like they're going to ask you that yep, yep. Mm -hmm. and what is the appropriate answer to that i think they just said i don't know or the, they they try saying you know i don't know or something like that because theologically dogs and cats and whatever don't have immortal souls like we do mm -hmm. so but like okay god could recreate a cat i mean he's god he can do whatever he wants i bet the majority of pet owners want their animals in heaven and they have no idea you know they don't they don't have souls you're right is there anything else that you'd like to tell us about uh this book like where we can get it and oh um it's on amazon and a bunch of other retailers it's not limited to just amazon it wasn't that successful commercially, so I'd be happy if you bought a copy because they're like, yay, it actually sold a copy! <laughs> well, you have to do a lot of marketing, I guess. You know. So. Yeah, but like, some books sell and some books don't, and no one knows why. Mm -hmm. And this book, for whatever reason, didn't grab people's attention, although maybe it just didn't get enough readers to like start light the fuse, so to speak. You never know. I mean, somebody may read it and tell somebody else, and the next thing you know, it might uh, might really get going. You never well, know. Yeah, it's happened to people with TikTok, like the Colleen Hoover lady. She was apparently just a mid-lister until TikTok decided she was awesome, and then suddenly she's just super number one New York Times bestselling author. Ah! <laughs> no one knows why. <laughs> I haven't read her books. They may be very good. I don't know. But I'm just like, TikTok. So uh, so it's available on a wide variety of yeah. books. That's it's, good. it's on Hoopla, and um, there's some library in Texas that owns a copy. So if you live in Texas, you might check your local library and have the one copy that's there in Texas. Well, I hope you have a lot of success with it, actually. You know, okay. maybe the right, the right person reads it. You never know what will happen. Yeah. So I do wish you luck. And, Thank uh, you. Yep. When you uh, finish another book, uh, you should get in touch with Sebastian, and we'll do another interview. Yeah. Well, uh, The Necromancer's War is almost finished. It's like 70,000 words in out of... Hopefully a hundred thousand. Um, it'll be some time after finishing that I get it published. But God willing, before the election, that's my goal. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah, alrighty. Well, we'll hope for that then. Okay, would you like to close us in prayer? Oh, sure. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Well, maybe I'll see you at the uh, next actual convention. Uh, Quite possibly. I yeah, I am a member of the guild. I haven't gone to any of the uh, meetings yet. Mm -hmm. But maybe the next mm -hmm. one. <laughs> so okay. hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. I'm going, God willing. Um, which I always put God willing. Like, you know, I will fly to such and such a city and beat people, God willing. Okay. Well, it is true. It is God's willing. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, you have a good night, and uh, you I too. Hope, I hope you have a lot of success with the book. Thank you. Yep. You take care. You too. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye.